Good to go? Good to go. All right, he said we're good to go. Are you good to go? Are you ready? You got your pen, you got your paper, you ready to take notes, you ready to make an impact? Well, today I got seven tricks that are gonna help you save time that I wish I knew when I was a beginning graphic designer. So if you're a new graphic designer, I'm gonna share seven things with you that are gonna be super impactful, give you a lot of your time back and give you more freedom to do the things that you really wanna do. You wanna get some freedom back? Well, this is a good video for you. So today I have seven epic tricks that I wish I would have known. Now, let's go ahead and jump over to these tricks. First, I wanna get into a couple things that you need to know just as a foundation before we get started. Time is not money. I hear this all the time, people saying, time is money, time is money. Time is not money. If I were to give you a million dollars, but you couldn't wake up in the morning, would you take it? No, who would take that? What good is a million dollars if you can't use it? Money is really not that important in the grand scheme of life and being able to buy time is. So the key to being able to buy your time back and become more efficient with the things that I'm going to teach you in this video is being able to get more time to do more of the things that you love. And you're gonna become more productive, which is gonna make you more money and is gonna give you better turnaround with your clients. And better turnaround with your clients means happier clients. So you get more freedom, you get better turnarounds and you get to get your jobs done quicker, which means you can do more work and make more money and you have the freedom and happiness because you're able to be more productive. And so this is what I wanna give you in this video and we're gonna jump into the seven tricks that I wish I would have known as a new creative. So what I think here, the easiest thing to do to get through this quickly, to be as efficient as possible, is I'm gonna grab my notes because I made some really detailed notes and I wanna make sure I don't miss anything in this video. All right, let me grab these here. All right, so tip number one, learn keyboard shortcuts. Keyboard shortcuts are something that I learned at the very beginning of my career. You can print out these charts. You can just go to Google and type in Adobe Photoshop keyboard shortcuts and learn all of those shortcuts. I use that probably 80, 90% of my time for most of the commands and most of the things that I do in Photoshop, including saving my work, Command S or Control S. Alt Option 4, I mean, there's all different keyboard shortcuts that you can use in Photoshop. So you wanna learn these, take the time, spend the time now upfront and invest into yourself and it's gonna speed up your work long-term. I'm sure I cut my work, my workflow and the time I spent on a project maybe by 30, 40% by using these keyboard shortcuts, not by having to go up to the top and hit every single drop down. And just as an extra little tip for the keyboard shortcuts on top of having a chart printed out and hanging on your wall in front of your desk or maybe uh, taped to your desk is you can also look at them inside of the toolbar so you can see the little shortcuts at the end in the bar. So that's a really big one for you that's going to help you cut down a lot of time. Number two is you want to set up your workspace layout. This is a lot of, this is a common thing I see a lot of graphic designers they do not do and you can not only set it up the way that you want, we'll have every single window and everything in your workspace set up perfectly for you, but then you can save that workspace. So every time I go in and something gets messed up, I just change the workspace to like essentials. If you're using like essentials or automation or all the different layouts and design, right? You need to create your own. Maybe you like one of those, but you wanna modify a little bit. You can save that workspace. And if it gets messed up for some reason, you can switch to essentials and then switch back to your saved workspace. This is a way that I've saved a lot of time. And I've been really efficient with having all of the, the different tools and the different windows on the right-hand side of my screen that I need and that I don't need. There's, it's very easy for me to find. And as time has gone on, I've become more and more familiar with the icons for each of those windows. And I've been able to scale it, giving myself more screen space. And that's something I want you to be able to do as well. So make sure you set up your own workspace inside of Photoshop, inside of Illustrator, inside of InDesign, all of these programs, you can create your own workspaces. This is a really good one. All right, the third trick that I want you guys to implement into your business is combining all of the elements from past designs into one document. Again, combining common graphics that you use. If you're using little starbursts for call outs, or if you're using little banners, or if you're using certain things all the time, create a document where you can have a lot of these common things all in one document. You can open it up and just quickly drag and drop it into your new document. This will save you a lot of time. This is something I did a while back. There are certain elements that I use over and over and over again, and there's no point in recreating the wheel. I just wanna take these existing graphics, especially if they're branded for a specific client, and create kind of a template document of all the elements that I used for that specific brand in one document so that if I'm ever creating something else for them, I can just quickly drag it so I'm not having to open up 10 
10, 15 other documents or even five other documents and bring them in. This is a way to save you time and it's gonna help you become a lot more efficient. The fourth trick that I wanna give you guys is creating templates of your existing design. So maybe it's a business card template or maybe like this channel, maybe it's your thumbnails. So using a specific layout for your thumbnails and for all the thumbnails that you design. So you can just open up that existing template and then copy it and change all the information over, especially if it's a beautifully designed piece. There's no point in recreating the wheel. It's not efficient to do that. You don't have to feel bad. Time is more important than money and you need to speed up your workflow and speed up a process. So create templates. If you have a web, uh, website mock-up, then use the same mock-up, but just open it up create it, save it as a new name, and then change that existing mock-up. There's no reason to start from scratch and relay out all the page layouts and all the content sections. Just use your existing layout and maybe change one or two things here and there to make it original, change the colors, you're gonna change the content, you're gonna change the images. It's gonna be look like a completely different design by the time you're done with it. By creating templates for your thumbnails, for your website mock-ups, for your business cards, it's gonna save you a lot of time and money. And this is something that I've automated and I've been doing in my business since about 2007 when I was doing a a lot of print design. I use the same templates for door hangers. I use the same templates for business cards and I have some different layouts that I like to pick from. So this is a way that save you a lot of time. It'll put more freedom in your pocket. The fifth trick I want to share with you, and this is more related to Photoshop is creating and recording a specific task or a series of tasks. You can do layer effects and blending effects and, and, color modes and all different types of settings that you can record and just apply to your design to save you a lot of time. Now, I am going to do a video on this. I may get, get to put it up in the description, but once I actually create that video, I will link it down in the description of the video and probably link it up here at the top so you can just click on it as a quick little action. But this is a really cool way to actually speed up your process a lot and put more time back in your pocket. All right, the sixth trick that I use, and this is something I've been doing almost since the very beginning, and I, see, I get files from other designers all the time that are very poorly done, and this is organizing your layers. You can actually take your layers and group them. Not only can you group them, but then you can name them, and then once you name them, you can color code them and make your layers palette look super clean. They say cleanliness is next to godliness and the cleaner and easier it is to navigate through these layers. I usually have a folder specifically for my background. Then I have a folder specifically for my logos. Then I have a folder for the photography. Then I have a photo for the content and I group them into the layers and then I can organize those layers and put them above or below depending on where I want those to be. Obviously background layer is gonna be at the very bottom, but organizing and naming your layers makes it easier for other people on your team or for your clients that are sending off the work to other designers to be able to use in the future. It's gonna save you time and it's gonna create less hassle where you can just click and drag an entire folder over to another design and not having to try to figure out which specific layer it is in the file and having things unnamed is gonna kill your productivity and kill your time. So make sure you name your layers, make sure you group your layers into folders, and then make sure you even go as far as coloring those folders so you know which one is which. This is a really big deal. I know this is gonna be a big tip for you. All right, the seventh trick, and this is an epic trick, something that you probably already do and you may not, who knows, and that's using stock imagery. Now, a lot of designers are probably against this, but I firmly believe in using stock elements in a side of a design. Now, that's not saying you're going to take the entire design off of Adobe stock or Shutterstock or one of those stock websites and take the whole thing and just change the content and just reuse somebody else's design. You want to use elements of an existing design to recreate. So if I'm creating a flyer for a plumbing business, there may be a picture of a tool or there may be a graphic of a plumbing photo that I need. I'm going to use that photo from Adobe stock rather than trying to recreate the image or go to that client's office. This is where I see a lot of people recreate the wheel and they don't use existing stock graphics. Getting a license to Adobe stock or man, there's so many different marketplaces out there, Shutterstock, iStock, oh man, the list goes on and on. Using stock graphics, stock vectors from something even like Vect Easy can save you a lot of time, give you a lot of freedom, and it's gonna speed up your design process. You don't need to create everything from scratch. That doesn't make you less of a graphic designer. It means that you're providing a better end result to your clients. You're getting more time back, you're making more money, and you're giving the client the result that they need faster. So don't be afraid to use stock graphics. And those are the seven tips that I wanted to give you seven tricks 
to help make you a better graphic designer, to help speed up your process and just help give you better productivity overall. So by saving all of this time on these projects, you're going to increase your turnaround time. You're going to increase your profits, which I would consider a win-win. Now take into consideration, it's going to take some time to learn some of these tricks like the keyboard shortcuts. You're going to take some time to learn it and practice it over time, but you're going to be making an investment in yourself and that investment is going to bear some big dividends. Dividends that will pay day by day, week by week, month by month, and even year over year. And they're going to continue to become bigger and bigger dividends. And then you're going to get to the point where you know these so well that you can then go teach other people like I have on how to do these things in your team or even outside here on YouTube or in other places. And you can actually help our industry get better too and help your company get better. So this is a really good area to invest your time in increasing your productivity and speeding up your design time, giving the clients a better result in the quicker amount of time. So that's what I got for you guys today. If you haven't already, make sure you go check out the Instagraphics Pro Network on Facebook, a community of creatives like yourself that are doing web, motion, and graphic design. We're leveling up our lives and our businesses, and I would love to see you there. Make sure you fill out all the questions, and I'll see you guys on the next video. I'm Adrian Boysell, and as always, keep looking up.